Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I am your host, Seishu. And, you know, today I am so, so honored to be speaking with the godfather of wedding photojournalism himself, Mr. Dennis Reggie. Dennis Thank is, you, De Seishu. yeah, welcome, Dennis. Dennis has been a huge influence in my life. Uh, he's been a, uh, a teacher, a, a speaker, and, uh, you know, he's, he runs these wonderful workshops uh, in Atlanta. Uh, they're always packed with great information. Uh, and he and I got into a little bit of a, uh, a debate, I guess, on Facebook recently. <laughs> and I said, you know what? Let's let's get this out in the open. Let's talk about Take it this. to the streets. Take it to take, the streets. Take, take it to the web. I'm happy. Absolutely. To, yeah. um, I'm going to jump right into it. You've been a wedding photojournalist uh, for a number of years. Uh, for those of you, for, for those of my audience who don't know who yeah. you are, give yeah. us a little bit of a, a, a synopsis of your, right. your, your career, sir. First off, thank you, Stacey, for this amazing venue. I followed your career uh, back uh, flying with fish and all that way back when, and your photography, and I'm honored to connect by Skype today to do this uh, interview. Yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a wedding photojournalist since before there was no such thing as right. a wedding photojournalist, at least not the phraseology. Uh, this is my, believe it or not, 40th year. I started when I was in college, way back when in Louisiana. And the idea being that there are a number of clients, as you suggested in your introduction, a number of clients who really want to be, I would say, followed and not led, who believe that the wedding is about authenticity of moments, and that's the way the photography should be. In other words, almost a photographer as a witness and not a director and I began reasoning through this when I first started taking classes back in the 70s when I was just an absolute kid just a kid uh, getting into the business Monty Zucker and the great Tibor Horvath great Monty Zucker of course uh, Tibor Horvath and other greats Don Blair and what I learned was there was one predominant mindset of photography, much the same that still prevails in great part today, sure. which is that a photographer believes that his or her mission at a wedding is to create fantasy, beautiful imagery. And I respect that. I also believe that there are certain clients out there and a good number and I, perhaps even I would say a growing number of clients, brides and grooms and families who really don't see their wedding photographer with that mission. They sense that the mission is for the photographer to document, to record, to anticipate, to capture, to be hidden. You know, at a wedding, uh, Seishu, I, I dress the part of a wedding guest. If they're in suits, so am I. If they're in black tie, so am I. If they're in casual clothing, no tie, I'm probably the same. In the sense being, I'm trying to disappear. I want to be a witness at a wedding who doesn't make things happen because I'm there. I mean, we know there are plenty of iPhones, <laughs> if not iPads right. that are there, you know, all that stuff going on. But Absolutely. I want to sort of disappear with my cameras, hold them down, move about, and not really command attention. I actually believe, as I have for all of my career, people look best when they're not aware of a camera. So based on that premise and in search of clients who share that uh, belief that real moments are far more um, valuable to them and to me, uh, I've gone about marketing to clients. And I'll be honest with you, Seishu, they're, they're probably on the slightly older side. In other words, they're not the 22 to 24. And nothing wrong with that. My mom was married at 21, by the way. Uh, and it's very it's a happy marriage for 60 plus years. But nothing wrong with that. But I would say the clients that I get are probably not going to be 22 years old, 21, 24, probably not. Why is that? Because that's an age where I think, and I hate to make age the, the determinant, but if we could overly generalize for the sake of the brevity of this interview, sure. I would say that really certain clients buy into the fantasy and the, you know, walking on a hilltop with balloons or the groom dipping them down in front of the perfectly centered sun or moon or whatever it is behind and, you know, backlight and sun flare and saturation and railroad tracks and, you know, really Photoshop <laughs> to death. I mean, I, I, I get that. Yeah. I'm just absolutely not there. I'm a guy. If you if you could see my my uh, my uh, Mac right now with all the little things at the bottom, the the apps and such uh, um, programs, you would not see 
Photoshop because I don't own it. I do have an assistant that does that I that we lease obviously from Adobe every month happily, uh, but I don't use that. that. My head is not there. We we are trying to work everything in Lightroom. Why is that? Because we really are reality bent. None of this fake uh, fashion imagery. N that's not where we are. We are looking for the twenty six, seven, eight. 29, 35. I just did 43 first time bride, first time groom as well in their four, young uh, lower 40s just recently, probably two or three of those this year in that same sort of demographic age set. Why is that? Because someone that's a touch older probably sees their wedding as being more about them and less about the imagined perception of what mm. it is to be a bride and groom, especially if you look at Pinterest and Instagram and Facebook and say, wow, I guess I've got to let him dip me on the wedding day. I guess we have to carry these silly balloons on a hilltop. I guess we have to sit down on a railroad track. I don't know what it is, but I would say <laughs> to you, it ain't what, it ain't what I'm doing. And, right. and my clients would probably fire me if I even, if the words, you know, dip him or dip right. her uh, came out of the, you know it's just it's not where i am and it's not where my clients are so what, what what would you say though for someone who's starting out and is extremely interested in pursuing wedding photojournalism as you have defined it almost uh what would you say to that person he or she starting out right now and they are inundated with these images on pinterest and facebook and yeah. all these other you know instagram th these options as as being the right way to do things. And th there's got to be a mindset shift on two fronts. One, I think, ha it has to be on the couple side, and mm -hmm. the other has to be on the photographer's side. They yeah. both have to match. Right. Otherwise, otherwise, there's going to be, you know, absolute mayhem, right? And if they match, then it's valid. You know, if, right. if you are, if you are right. supplying what the demand is, then right. it's valid. If they want to be dipped in front of a sunset, if they want to walk up the hill, if they want to sit on railroad tracks, I think that might be illegal, but that's all right. It is. If they want to, and if they want <laughs> to run in the streets and jump hand in hand together with right. the whole wedding party, I mean, we've seen all that ad nauseum. But I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying if that's what the client wants, then absolutely make the magic, go for it, and be happy. But it, you, the question is, what do we do with a, with a budding? photojournalist, someone right. that really is bent on being a witness, mm -hmm. um, a person there to document and not create these fantasy fashion-esque moments, right? They're not into the Hallmark card imagery. I get that. I think the answer is one must learn and do all of those things to be fully versant with their camera, the technology, the artistry of it. Uh, to be honest, in my world, I actually did this proactive sort of thing of look here, hold still, all that for the first few years until I understood what I was up to. And then once I mastered that, once the camera was an extension of my hands, and I'll give you the two Achilles heel of any newbie photographer, very simply, they have a difficult time posing people in groups because that takes some practice and skill. Mm -hmm. And the second one is really clear. They sort of go to their knees with an electronic flash because you, you'll notice that you'll never see those shots on their website because they're just, they're not really distinctive often from an iPhone picture, to be perfectly honest, because it takes some, I think, experience, finesse, thought to make flash look good. God knows we spent a lot of time with my small team of four people, photographers, excellent folks with minimum of 10 years, but we spend so much time on shall we gel the light to bring it to 3200? We know flash is 5500 mm -hmm. degrees, which is a bluish white. I get that. It's daylight. But, you know, I don't do many weddings in, in Atlanta or New York or, or, or Florida. I don't do many weddings where the room is 5,500 degrees. California, you're outside. Okay, I get that. Daytime, you probably don't even need a flash there. But nope. And I do a lot of work in California as well. But when you get into the reception room, when the room is warm and, and beautiful, how do you use an electronic flash to give that, you know, consistent looking lighting it's an unfortunate part of photography because you could have the fastest iso capable digital camera in the world but if the quality of the light is the problem not the quantity mm -hmm. it's still going to look awful even if you shoot it at a 6400 right. iso or right. you know 5000 iso i mean i get that i mean the camera's not the problem the problem is we need a light on the face that is 
flattering, maybe looking of the ambiance of the room. So we do tend to gel our lights. Overwhelmingly, we also turn our flashes to do some bounce. And these are not techniques that take just a couple of months to learn. It may take me a few years to really, I hate to say master it, but you know, we're trying to get top fees. And if to be top fee paid, we've got to be top in proficiency in terms of the look and feel of our product. So, you know, we're all about matted albums, not not flush books like everyone's doing. You would never catch us doing like a graphy album or anything like that. That's not where my market is. I'm not making fun of it. It's just that's not where I am with my clients. A matted album, a Queensberry or something like that. Absolutely. I want that clientele that's willing to pay a premium. I'm not chasing 5000 or below. I'm chasing well above that. And to do that, I've got to have an experience, a quality standard, imagery that is sensitive, believable, of the moment, mm -hmm. of the heart of the photographer. So we're kind of rolling it into an artistic endeavor based in a solid scientific technical knowledge of photography. My folks are all B, including me, B personality and not A. And A personality at a wedding is hold still, look here, heads together, go walk on that hilltop, hold your hands, grab these balloons. That's giving orders to a client, a bride and groom. That is not where we are. Our clients are typically, I believe, order givers themselves, mm -hmm. and we're not going to give orders to order givers. I, I so, almost feel like that you, your your clients are different in a way. They, they, they ex, Their expectations are different than most of the folks who are I, I wouldn't deny married. that. Yeah, right? they're probably in the twenty percent. I'd say if the, if America and I hate to be again classifying people, that just sounds cruel in some in some level. But I'm also a business person, as are most of the viewers of our interview. You know, there are folks that are leaders and there are folks that are followers. All people are good leaders and followers. I love all people. I come from a background of blue collar, you know, just normal family people. But my clients today are not the way. They're not of the ilk of the way I was raised. They're probably of a different, more education, probably greater travel. Uh, my clients have passports. They're in that, you know, 21% of America has passports. Those are my clients. Why do I say that? Because they're well-traveled. They yes. want their photography to be about them. They have opinions. Travel tends to make someone knowledgeable and more confident about defining their own image. Can I say it that way? Sure. So it's not that they're better because they're not better. It's that they're different. So, yes, I was raised in the 80%, but nowadays, 40 years later, I'm catering to typically folks in that 20%. And I'm not trying to be a snob. I'm just trying to be understanding that these clients don't want to be led, don't want to make believe on the side of a hill or a train station or with Photoshop gimmickry. They don't want the clouds above their wedding to be high drama. They certainly don't want to drone at their wedding. Oh my, absolutely unacceptable. <laughs> they don't want a photographer in a t-shirt, a baseball cap or a, right. you know, a worn out polo shirt. I mean, I, listen, how I dress during the week is one thing, but at a wedding, right. I'm going to be dressed parallel with the wedding guests. I'm looking for high fee and not low. Right. I want to be the consummate professional. So all of the decisions we make about our photography, our lack of verbiage and communication, being the quiet observer, it all has a purpose to cater to this 20% crowd, well-traveled, well-educated, probably 26 plus, 32, 35, 38 year old brides and grooms. We're catering to that crowd with a look, feel that depicts them and their love, not some photographer's preconception. I'm not dictating some Hallmark card imagery. I'm not going to say, let's go in the streets and jump in the air. I'd be fired instantly. Actually, I would have never gotten the assignment. So you don't see that on my website. You don't see that in my albums. The client knows what to expect. I position myself, I think correctly, for my market, a wedding photojournalist, a historian with a camera. There you go. Basically. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, and as I promised you, I would. You know, there's lots of opportunities, options out there. We've made that very clear. And you've already stated that you've catered to a certain kind of client, a certain 
I guess we can call them a class of client who are expecting a certain look, a certain feel from their photo photographs. Am I right? Probably not unusual in the ways of marketing, right? Right. Certain airlines look for a certain client. Right. Certain, you know, certain certain vendors they pinpoint who it is they're trying to do business with. Right. It's basically aligning your marketing right. with an intended clientele. Which is where I was going. Which is yeah. How do you do that? If let's say you don't have forty years of experience in this business, and yeah. you're starting out. Because I think a lot of my my audience uh, who, who are chiming in, who are listening to this yeah. conversation, would be interested in knowing, listen, I really like the idea of not having to pose my, my couple on their, on their wedding day and direct them. And I want them to have fun. I want them, I want to be a part of their wedding where I'm photographing them and their, their event as a, as a, as a witness. Right. Uh, you know, how would you, what would you do, I guess, to get started in this business yeah. where you don't have the work, but you really want to do that kind of work. You need experience and proficiency. You need to become excellent. Remember, it's the same market that buys those you know, BMW cars and all those nicer, finer, handcrafted products in, in their suits, their clothes, their automobiles, all of that. It's all about excellence. And so be it with their wedding photographers, photography. So I believe excellence is going to – how do we become excellent? Well, I think practice. Mm -hmm studying. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. And by the way, it didn't take me 40 years to have success. I mean, let me say, no doubt, I had no success. Doubt. By, by the way, it did take me seven of craziness where I did nothing. I absolutely starved for seven years. Uh, and in, in my seventh year, eighth year, then I began, I thought, okay, now I get it. I'm trying to lead when I should be following. I've mastered my camera, but I have the wrong client base. So I had to go to wedding planners, I had to go to banquet managers at hotels that were catering to that 20%, even though I'd never been in those hotels, and I had to show them work that made sense. I couldn't show them bride on hilltop being dipped by groom right. because that's not it. I had to basically define this after, in my case, seven years. I don't think it would take seven years, but I think it would take you know, certainly some time a couple of years of becoming excellent. You know, there are good photographers and then there are exceptional photographers. I think the exceptional one will honestly and understandably have that foot foot advantage, one foot advantage mm -hmm. into the door because they can get doors open. They can visit with a banquet. Who doesn't want to meet the head of wedding banquets or wedding uh, receptions at some fancy Ritz Carlton or Four Seasons or Hyatt, you know, Grand Hyatt, whatever. I mean, of course, many photographers want that connection and I get that so you've got to be excellent that takes time education practice I do a lot of reading even today in my 40th year I enjoy staying current I also started in the film days back in the in the in the 80s and 90s but by the time 2002 came around you know digital made mm -hmm. better since 2003 you know bam we, we've been a dozen 13 years into that so that was a change of you know mid course but it, it's worked out just fine so the answer is it's not easy, otherwise everyone would do it. Absolutely. But I think excellence should be the mission. And I think if you have to begin dealing with a client base that isn't your ultimate client base, so what? I did that. You've got to learn it somewhere. Give them excellence. But if you dream for a client base of leaders who want to be followed, who want to be captured naturally, that will be a good aim if you have that excellence and proficiency and if you can market yourself Monday through Thursday with those folks who can maybe send you some client leads that make sense for that style. I know I'm not the photographer for every client. I'm just looking for my piece of the market where they get it, I get them, mm -hmm. and they're willing and able to pay the fees that are required to do it that way. So it's just it's just a matter of basic business, right. but with a lot of thought behind it, I would say. Uh, let's segue into something that's very, very critical at this time in, uh, in our industry, which is uh, I know I've talked to several other photographers who've been a photographer for many years, 40, 50 right. years old, you know, well, long. And, and they swear to me that the wedding industry is sitting in a bubble that's about to burst. They feel that the prices have gotten so high that, uh, uh, that there is no real return for the, the client and the, the clients are going to start to essentially battle that higher prices and they're wow. going to 
and they're going to. I haven't heard that one. You, okay. really? well, like it, today, it, it, the, the prices are high today. Then what were they in 07 before the bubble burst in 08? August of 08, you know, Lehman Brothers goes broke. Uh, you know, they sh- and then of course here comes the here comes the uh, you know the big insurance company AIG and all the other financial meltdown in America uh, and really around the world, but certainly in America in 08. Wow, uh, you know, prior to that we had phenomenal fees. We had a number of photographers making seven figures, seven like that means over a million dollars a year. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how many we have doing that now. I think that we've been humbled, or mm-hmm. it, and it's actually not not only because of the meltdown of 08. We had honestly Facebook. We had uh, the arrival of the iPhone. You know, we had Twitter. We had a lot of different ways of communicating the the, the moments of a wedding inexpensively. Uh, maybe not to any level near in terms of quality. Right. But if all of a sudden everyone becomes a photographer, we're well beyond the you know the days where it used to be forty or fifty thousand. I think the PPA says we have one hundred and forty thousand professionals. I think it's far more than that. You know, the number of weddings per year in America. We know that. 2.1 million weddings per year in America. The difference is now they're being chased not by 40 or 50,000 photographers, but by probably, in my opinion, a quarter of a million photographers right. who are looking for supplemental income right. on a weekend. We've always had that as one of the issues of our business. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but from a business point of view, I'm not seeing where the prices are going to just fall down. I don't think the prices are crazy in most situations that I hear. There are folks out there doing this for two, three thousand bucks, you know, including some other services, four thousand. Uh, in Atlanta, I know we see sort of that, you know, seven is getting dangerous. You know, it used to not be that way, but now seven thousand, who can get over seven? Well, sorry, you know, I, I need you to, to pay my longtime staff and to do it on this high level. But the short of it is um, we do have, you know, pricing that'll that'll be competitive there as well with my team members. But again, with experience goes the expectation of higher. I do not think the market is 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 uh, near some type of a balloon balloon bust. I don't see it. I think there's always a market, thankfully, for excellence. But even the market for excellence has been somewhat brought to its knees in terms of in terms of fee attainment. There's still a nice living to be made. But crazy would be a word. Maybe you could have used that in 07 or 06, but not in. 15 or 16 i just don't see that to me it's a lot of supply a lot of people with cameras right a lot of folks that'll do it for nothing then you take in the the craigslist crowd now you're talking about really nothing handing a cd so i i don't know you know well that's what i meant is that is that the prices have to go down because there's so many people photographing there's the the, the, the laws of supply and demand exactly the clients have a choice a greater choice now we're we're talking about you know the client's expectations being a certain sort of brand, a certain sort of look, and if that's not matched by uh, obviously the ability to pay, then what? You know where where are we at at that point? The, in the time? competitive forces come into play. In right. other words, you know, really, folks are shopping with dollars in hand, but they're. Their understanding of photography is somewhat different now in the Facebook era, in the Pinterest era. They, there's a lot of access to a lot of different looks. There are folks that are new in the business that do it on a part-time basis that are lower priced. Usually the 20% that I'm talking about, that market, I would say very discerning on their on their business skills. They can discern whether that's a lot of promise but not much product ah, or whether yep. the promise and the product are one. You can't really... Uh, baloney someone into thinking that you're great if the proof isn't there with your website, your images, your reputation, your referrals. So I would say to you that, you know, a savvy buyer will make a savvy decision. And if that's the market you're after, I think there's no substitute for genuine excellence, genuine experience, genuine ability to capture interesting photographs that say something about the couple. And hopefully, and this is just me on a personal note, hopefully without Photoshop being in the front seat, mm-hmm. let Photoshop be in the back seat. It should be more about the photography and less about the, you know, 
highly dramatic skies or the you know the, the vignetting or this i mean that you know and i love adobe i love that we use lightroom very you know very effectively to get our perfect color and look and all that lightning darkening cropping i i get that but when once it becomes a photoshopped graphic arts piece right. you know in my opinion it's a much smaller market i'm sorry it's a large market much smaller fee and i should i should say that folks that buy that are buying a reproduction a fantasy Fantasy to me is not the premium market. Reality is people pay for original works much more than they pay for mass produced, you know, f fictionalized imagery. That sounds more like a poster than a piece of art. So originals to me are the premium product. That's why I'm looking for the great moments to be captured with very little speaking, uh, Seishu. I might go to a wedding, even working in another country where I don't even speak the language. Not a problem because what I'm up to, and maybe other photographers have the same uh, understanding, we're not about speaking or ordering. We're just about moving about, looking like a wedding guest, really, but, but although not eating and drinking and talking, but just sort of looking about, dress the part, and capturing moments that are oomph, that are just have that power. And that's it, it's a challenge, really. And of course, once you're good at that, then you got to find the market that appreciates that. So it's, it's not, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. It's not easy. Awesome. But it's, to me, well worth it because these clients are so happy. You know, just as I'm sure the 80%, which I come from and many others, the 80% is happy if they have the look that they want. And it may be, it may be slightly different. Who knows? Indeed. Yeah. Uh, Dennis, it's been such a pleasure talking to you today. Uh, My pleasure. You know, it's, it's great to connect with you and to, to listen to you and to listen to your, uh, you know, really sound advice for those considering wedding photography uh, moving forward you know there are lots of people who are joining the industry i'm sure who are looking for some guidance and and i think they need to know that there are alternatives to what they are seeing on their pinterest boards or instagram accounts or whatever there are there is an alternative and that's wedding photojournalism i've been a very strong proponent of it uh you know whenever i've uh, you know, you photograph weddings. I've always pursued it in that same manner. Uh, it's easier on me and my conscience, to be honest with you, than anything else. So uh, it works out for everybody in that case. It feels right for your personality exactly. to be, yeah, exactly. to be yeah. a documentary photographer, someone exactly. who's looking for real moments, right. not creating ones that, you know, could be, you know, I hate to say corny, but at some point they, they, they tend to get, a, they sort of sometimes approach that corniness. And I, that's unfortunate. I'm with you. I'm just not comfortable asking right. someone to do something that could be ever perceived as hokey. So I'm not saying this style is better. I'm just saying it may be a better fit for right. certain segments of the market. That's right. All styles are have their following. I'm just talking about one that seems to do very well with a slightly older crowd that may want it to be about them. And I, I get that awesome. and love it. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Dennis. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Thanks so much, Seishu. Great to be with you today. Take care. Thanks.